Hi, everyone. Welcome to another cocktail hour. I'm so excited today because um, we're going to have one of my favorite things ever, chocolate. I really like chocolate, but not just any chocolate. We are tasting chocolates from Haiti. And um, you will meet Corinne, Corinne, my our guest tonight. But what really like blew my mind was uh, as a Haitian person growing up in Haiti, thinking I know everything about Haiti, I didn't know that our chocolates were world famous until I met Corinne. So um, super excited to introduce you and super excited to hear your story and taste all the chocolates, y'all, all the chocolates. <laughs> Oh, it's less of it, which is okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so do you um, all hear me well? Just a, a little. We check. can. Being okay, fun. you hear me well. Okay, perfect. So, so here's what I'd love to do. We want to hear about your story. We want to hear about the chocolates, but I think the first thing we need to do is at least taste one of them because if we're tasting them and you're talking, like you're gonna sound more like exciting and fun because we have chocolate on the break. Am I right? <laughs> totally right. So we are gonna get started, but as we get started, some ground root, I'm sure it's similar to wine, but as you test, at least for chocolate, we like you to look, to sniff and taste. Look first, um, let's look at the, this bar, since you have it in the brown sugar bar, you look, it says made in Haiti, 50% cocoa. So this is not a generic um, mass made bar with potentially 4% cocoa, lots of preservative. But here you can look and see this is a bar with, and if you turn it around, you can see the ingredient. It's cocoa from Haiti, Haitian cocoa, Haitian original cane sugar called Rapadou in Haitian Creole or French or panela in Latin America, um, cacao butter and milk, nothing else, no preservative, no nothing. So this help you um, get familiar with the ingredient in it, that it's healthy ingredient, that it's, it has an origin and we know where it's coming from. And then when you open your Marie, bar, I have a question. Why okay. is it that I want to expand it? Like, I, anybody else do this? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, it just means that I'm old. Okay, go ahead, girl. Go ahead. You want to expand that it's bigger in, in size? Yeah, okay. Back away. Back away. Ah, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will work on it. It's just like as we added the nutritional fact, we kind of ran out of real estate. Oh no, no, no! It wasn't. It wasn't meant for you to add. I'm just being silly. So you're good. You're good. <laughs> and then, so you first look, so you see what you are getting. So it's a milk chocolate bar with brown sugar. And then when you open it, you sniff or take a, a smell of it. You, you can open your bar like this. Yes, your knife or... Your girl. packaging is so beautiful. It feels like every step of the way feels like a, a gift. Yes, it does. Thank you. And then you, you smell. So what do you smell? Chocolate. Darlene, who would you, like, you like to take a... I smell cocoa butter. Okay. That's what it smells smell. like to okay. me. Okay, how about you, Daryl? I don't think Daryl has the okay. chocolate. Okay, oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. You were normally, Paulette, Paulette schedules these, and I did this time. I forgot to order the chocolate. Okay, that's okay. So I, I just, I got the wine, but not the chocolate. So I'm okay. taking notes. Okay, sure. And Dina? Would you like to say what you smell when you try, you take, you? Mm, it's, um, it's so, it, it smells like it's, it's, um, I don't know, almost like, I open, is this the one we're opening? Yeah, yes, that's the one we're opening now, yes. Um, cocoa butter, as the okay. young lady said before, yes. Okay. Right? Okay, so there is cocoa butter in this bar, um, but 
I think I'm selling cocoa too, like dark cocoa um, with some, um, the brown sugar um, that we use, the panela that I mentioned earlier. Um, and what also happened with, um, with chocolate made in Haiti is because we don't have these big farms with acres and acres of cocoa. We have farmers who do like what they call um, uh, um, tropical garden. So there's a little cocoa, a little plantain, a little sugar, a little coffee. So it kind of takes the taste of what is around. And for this particular bar, I do taste a little bit of plantain and of, so, but that's me, Adia Water. I mean, some people might feel it tastes something different, but that's it. So now we're gonna take a bite of it. So, so compared, this bar is made, as I said, with original cane sugar. Cane sugar hasn't been refined that we get directly from the farmers. So it's kind of, we get the cane sugar, it get pressed and the sugar juice come out and get boiled, the water gets separated. So it's the raw sugar. So it has more of a caramelized taste compared to usual milk chocolate. This is not a creamy taste. It's more of a caramelized taste for this chocolate. What I'd like to say to you, with this bar is that usually this is a milk bar, so there is milk. And as when we're reading the ingredient, it's cocoa, cocoa butter, sugar, milk, nothing else, only four ingredients. Um, so it gives you, it's, I think it's very flavorful and it really has that creamy taste. I agree with the cream. Uh, it, it's really creamy. You would think because some chocolates, dark chocolates are kind of uh, stark, but this has a creamy feel and taste to it. Yeah. And usually, um, what is, um, and usually a milk bar only has four to 14% cocoa. So this bar with 50% um, cocoa is more like a dark chocolate with milk than your regular milk chocolate bars. So I, I wanted to say if it's okay, this surprised me because when I opened it, I went for the darkest first mm -hmm. because that's what I like. I like the darker, the better. But this really doesn't have, I assumed it was gonna be sugary sweet and it's not. I mean, this is really like more creamy and uh, it feels like a darker chocolate. I, mm -hmm. I think this is delicious. It is, and the reason is usually, as I was saying, the milk bar usually has four to 14% cocoa. So we expect to have that very milky, that very um, sugary taste, while this bar with 50% cocoa is more like a dark chocolate with milk. So yes, so it's perfect with a port. I really like my, um, uh, that Teller port. Um, I usually pair it with it or with a Moscato too. Um, yes. Yeah. So while we're tasting, I will introduce myself and kind of, and the other thing before I introduce myself, I'll say like, usually, yes, it's good. You can go to, from darkest to less dark, but what we found out in tasting, if you go this way, everything else is going to taste very sugary. So that's why I prefer to start with the milk one. And as we get more darker, darker chocolate as we taste more. Corinne, before you, we, we go into your story and you guys, she has an amazing story. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. Um, I'm curious, how do you taste chocolate? So I love that you told us to look at the ingredients, look at it kind of like we do with a bottle of wine exactly, to smell it. But do you chew it or do you let it sit on your tongue? Is there a proper way of tasting? Good question. So after the look and the sniff, the other thing is to taste. At first, to like the take a first bite and let it um, roll around your palate, so you can see what you take. And then you can even take a deep breath and then kind of aerate the chocolate. And maybe you take another bite and then you the flavors start to come clearly. So if you take a bite of it, so it's better you can either break it as a bite like this from your bar or take a bite on your with your 
with your tooth, but it's better to just break it and put it on your mouth. Good question though. Does anyone have any comment or question regarding this first bar that we are tasting? To me, it feels like almost multi-dimensional. Like there's this kind of graininess. And I mean, in a good way, like muddy. It is grainy. So what we do, and it's not as like, as we, I'm not gonna say it's unrefined, but it's not as refined as some of the bar that we get. And the, often the refinement come with adding the preservative to it. That's what make it stay re, um, more refined. So we do it the Haitian way where we don't add any um, preservative, any chemical in it. So it keeps some of the grindiness of the, of the cocoa in it. But as it's multi-dimension, it has different tastes as you go get it through your palate. Anyone else? Delicious. Yes, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, quick question. What does everyone think about the pairings? Darlene, are you, what do you, what did you open? Did you open both? And the great thing is these wines, you open them, they last forever. So they don't spoil. Yeah, I'm drinking the, the port, the Noval Black Reserve. It's really good. Okay. And I'm glad to hear it lasts a long time because I'm the only person in my house that's going to be drinking. It. Right. <laughs> You'll have that forever. Okay. Okay. All right, Corinne, take it away. Tell us about you. Sure. And so how did I get into chocolate? A little bit of background for me. Thank you, Regine, Regine again, Regine again for inviting me. So I'm Haitian American. I grew up in Haiti all the way to high school. And um, I was aware of the lack of opportunity around a lot of people around us who needed help. The housekeeper needed help with um, medical bills or back to school. So I said, when I grew up, I'm gonna, not only going to do charity, I'm going to create businesses. People can come to work for me instead of just waiting for me to give them a donation. So fast forward, I got my engineering degree at the University of Michigan. I got an MBA from the Wharton School of Business. I work both as an engineer, thank you, as an engineer or and as a consultant, I work for L'Oreal, Hormel Food in Nebraska. I've also worked for the Haitian government as a consultant. I've worked as a consultant also for Barclays. I was at um, Accenture. So then I had this all this experience and I was like, okay, how am I gonna make a difference in Haiti or create that business? So at this point, um, I, th I was ready to make a difference and the business that I was, I would create will need to have three main impacts. First, it needed to create a revenue for farmers. As I mentioned earlier, um, a lot of Asian farmer or subsidence farmer, and they have a little bit of everything in their, um, in their Creole garden or their tropical garden, a little bit of cocoa, a little bit of avocado, a little bit of mango, a little bit of coffee, but when it's when it is season, they eat a little and they're ready to sell the extra. But guess what? Their neighbors have the same thing. And because of the infrastructure issue, it doesn't really get to the big town. So I'm like, OK, how can I find a way to buy this crop from them and provide revenue directly in the communities? The second was to create blue collar jobs. You and I as a four year degree, but in or more, um, but um, in Haiti, it's only 4% of the population who has this. So I wanted to create jobs for young women, especially who are willing to work, but are not educating like you, like you and I. So that was the second goal. And the third was to be outside of Port-au-Prince. Um, the capital, I mean, when the 2010 earthquake happened, everything was kind of centralized, nothing would happen because everything had to go to Port-au-Prince. I was like, how about if I create opportunity outside of Port-au-Prince? A little bit like you and I, none of us in DC right now, I don't think so, we're in Chicago or New York, we're living flourishing, fulfilled life, but we're not in DC. So that was kind of the, the logic around doing it outside of Port-au-Prince, creating opportunity outside. So, so are um, you, for, for those who don't know, I'm sorry, Queen. Yeah. Um, what you're saying then is Port-au-Prince is a center, just like DC is the center. So you wanted to make sure that everything didn't revolve around that center. Exactly. Or, okay. Yes. 
um, that there were opportunity outside of Port-au-Prince because everything is central as we even call it the Republic of Port-au-Prince just because everything happened there. So I started researching different crops and first I thought about transforming main, um, oranges and grapefruit in juices but the equipment was a million dollar and I didn't have stuff saved. So then I find out about cocoa in my research and I realized that Haitian cocoa, um, so cacao, cocoa, whichever way you prefer. This is the beans um, with the shell, and this is the bean without the shell. So it's used by high-end chocolatier in France, like Bona, Varona. Um, Bona is one of the first chocolate makers in the world. Bean to bar, they use Haitian beans. They're bought at twenty dollars, and and Varona is the main cocoa importer in France, they do all the couvertures. So they do mass chocolate, well, somehow, and then they they sell it to all the chocolatier, the bonbon makers. So I'm like, well, if they are doing this, why not me doing a Finnish bar in Haiti where I'm creating additional opportunity for the farmers. And as I add ingredient, the sugar, the lime, the cashew nut, the orange, et cetera, I'm creating more opportunity for the farmers the job in the small community where we are and the opportunity outside of port au -Prince. So let's move on to our other milk bar, the Paradis. This was the first, the first bar we created and we work with a chocolate um, make, how do you call it? Someone who create taste, um, chocolate taste. Um, um, to create all our bars, we will tell him what we want in, and what's the, um, what are the tastes, what are the ingredients we want. And first, we need to look at the ingredients. So there are three ingredients in this case. I mean, four Haitian cocoa, sugar, milk, and cacao butter. So compared to the first bowl, we just have the, which has more of the brown sugar. So it gives it a caramelized taste. This one has white sugar. So it more of a creamy taste and might be closer to what you use in terms of a milk chocolate bar. So we'll make a sneak, the sneak this again. And I'm gonna ask Catherine maybe to tell us what she thinks of the smell. It's actually hard for me to smell it because I'm also cooking in my kitchen right now. Okay, okay. Will anyone else want to volunteer? It definitely smells, I, I don't know if creamy is a smell. I'm just, it's like just off the first, there, it smells smooth. I don't, it's, I don't know why I'm not describing myself correctly, but it does smell creamy. Yeah, creamy is. I like, I like creamy. Yeah, creamy I is. I think so correct. too. Yeah, yeah that's um, correct. Yeah. I'm gonna say something really weird, but go with me. It smells like a baby to me, <laughs> like in a good way. Yeah. Like there's this powdery Fresh. freshness that. Fresh. Just, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I was gonna say like clean. hot chocolate. You know how hot chocolate smells. Oh. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's delicious let's just say that <laughs> yeah but okay um but i do it's think that does also say a little like i was just say hot cocoa like very dark chocolate so now that we're taking the first bite or the second bite so it is definitely creamier than the other bar and kind of a very fulfilling and full milk chocolate bar so it's like milk, but with a lot of cocoa. So like a hot cocoa, a hot cocoa, a hot chocolate, put in a bar format. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very elegant. Very rich, very elegant. Yes, it's mm -hmm. rich. It's a very rich bar. Um, you, it's like, it's a milk bar. So there's milk in it, but you don't only taste the milk. You do taste the cocoa in it. And then the milk is an additional that adds the creaminess to it. 
if I, I'd like to step back a minute. I think the other bar was more like a cherry. I could almost feel like there was a dark cherry flavor to that one. Just yes, me. and yeah. the reason might be, and, and that's the, the thing, like we don't have like in Ecuador where he has the acres and acres of bars, of, of cocoa trees. We more have this um, tropical garden where the farmer grow plantain, sugar, cherry, cocoa, and all. So depending on what is close to that cacao tree, it does get that um, cherry flavor or that um, uh, that banana, that plantain flavor, or that fruity flavor or nutty, depending on what is around it. So so each bar, depending on what batch of, of beans they're from, might have more of a uh, of that cherry flavor or that nutty flavor or that plantain flavor or that grapefruity flavor. So thank you, Regine, for including the nose for us. So creamy, baby fresh, hot chocolate, baby powder, palate, creamy, palate, creamy, elegant. Um, crispy. That's delicious. Would you like to add something? Who did you say? Christine. I think she was saying something. Oh, okay. Okay. Kristen. I'm just so excited. I'm sorry. I'm texting my friends who are really big dark chocolate <laughs> lovers. And they were, and I was talking about how cool this class was. And my bars, I'm sorry, I ordered too late. My bars are on the way. But I'm like, if the milk chocolate is 50%. I have some gifts of dark chocolate for my friends because I think it might be too intense for me, but I'm excited <laughs> because they're big dark chocolate people. And this is very high quality, obviously based on the ingredients. So they're going to be so happy. So maybe the 90% might be too much for you, but that is, oh, that is putting out on our next bar to 60%. This is our best seller in terms of bar, but before Kara, are you, were you saying something or can I just keep talking well, yes. where did she go she was on okay okay she. yes okay so just making sure this is our best seller our mini bar um this is the first dog bar but the two previous bar we try were milk chocolate so these are vegan mm -hmm. dairy free um dog chocolate and this is at 60 percent. this is a kind of a nice body in terms of of in terms of chocolate bar. Um, so it's not too dark, not too sweet. It has only two ingredients. If you turn it around, it's cocoa and sugar and nothing else. It's really that bar when you eat and you're like, oh my God, dark chocolate could be good, could be tasty. I never thought I would like dark chocolate. This is the bar for that. So if you thought you never liked dark ch chocolate, Kristen, this is the bar for you to try and enjoy and be like oh and on top of that it's good for you because there's only two ingredients so um yes yeah, so first let's you can look at the ingredient it's very so, easy go ahead Corrine, Corrine, okay i don't know besides liking chocolate um i don't know anything about making chocolate so obviously it makes sense that these are like two for ingredients, but that's kind of blowing my mind. I don't know if it's just me. Okay, I'm like, am I the only one? And so that's amazing. I, I, was that, I know, I, and I'm sitting here like, shoot, I'm gonna make my own chocolate. I'm gonna make a Chicago chocolate. No, I'm not, just kidding. But how is that sustainable? Like, how do you, because I also noticed, which I love that you have the dates on the back. Yes. So is that just like all fine, chocolates are only two ingredients is that the way it is yes and some some fine chocolates you don't even do the milk bar this milk bar you wouldn't find them because they only work with usually with two ingredients the cocoa and sugar then there is the inclusion so they can have a a, a, a lime bar a sea salt bar a cashew nut bar but it's usually working with only two ingredients cocoa and sugar but one step back um, before we move to trying our dog bar, um, cocoa. So back in the, uh, we've used to hearing chocolate done in Belgium, in France and all, but cocoa only grow between the Ecuador and the two tropics. 
So it's only country located in this area. So we were thinking Haiti, Ghana, India, part of India, part of, I mean, Ivory Coast. Um, of course, if it's Haiti, is DR, also Dominican Republic, or Trinidad. Also Hawaii, because that's the part of the US that is where we do find cocoa. And so this is where cocoa comes from. And then it gets exported, the raw part it gets exported to France, to Belgium, to the chocolate maker now in the US and to other parts of Western Europe where chocolate has been done and have been done and eaten for many years, many centuries, um, decades and centuries. But cocoa doesn't grow there. It's grown in the tropics. So between the Ecuador and the two tropics and we were just in Haiti, for instance, we were just exporting the beans, actually the low, so there's the low grade but beans that goes to m and Mars. Well, I'm not gonna keep sitting, but the, the mass produce bar where mm -hmm. it's mostly like they take cocoa from any grade quality, mass um, dry it, and then put very little, like this bar has four to 14% cocoa. So, Everything else is sugar preservative and all, whereas like single origin, um, handcrafted makers, we make sure that we only have two ingredients that you can name. And that's why there's no breakout, no issue when you eat it and it's healthy. It gives you a lot of energy. It makes you feel good because cocoa has all of this antioxidant and all these good thing in it. And you get a good quantity of them. Definitely in a bar 90%, it's kind of like you're just being good to yourself, totally. One more question. Where do the names come from? So the first one I see. Sure. So. Wanga so, ne Neje. Oh, go ahead. Neges. Okay, so it's fine. So we wanted to highlight, let me get two bars that are not open so you can see it better. So we wanted to highlight element of 80s fauna and flora. So like this bird, the paradis bird, it has a bird of paradise flower on it. And it's just like, we were in Haiti, we took a photo and we're like, okay, there's plenty of bird of paradise. So let's highlight this. This one will be a hummingbird at the chocolate factory in front of it. There was a bunch of hummingbirds. So that gave us the, this is the wing of the hummingbirds. It's also called Wanganegues or Colibri in Haitian Creole, hence the name of the bar. You see the bar is called on the side, Wanganeges. So that's how we kind of name it similar to the packaging. While the Paradis bar, it's kind of like the flower of paradise. The Minuit bar is with midnight in French. Um, it's a Haitian, the part of a Haitian butterfly, the night butterfly that you can see in Haiti. Um, this is a white flower and I just came back from Haiti and I usually my husband choose the which photo and I went to the hotel where it got inspired so if I could show you my phone you will see the photo of I'm like that's how you got inspired for the book ever I saw the flower and he was like yeah that's how I see it we stay in that hotel in Tapation and I took the photo and hold on I'll pull out my phone hold one second it's the last photo Sorry, it's the last photo I took. So it's gonna be, I think, I'm not sure if you can see oh, beautiful. very well. Let me see, okay, do you guys? So it's, yeah. it's the, the flower that inspired us for this one. So anyway, we try to highlight element of Haiti's fauna and flora when we do our packaging. So not only we use Haitian ingredients, we buy it from Haitian farmers, we um, have Haitian women doing the chocolate, but on our packaging, we try to showcase the beauty, what we have in Haiti. Like for this bar is the Haitian conch, which is very, it's the, the conch. It was very popular during our revolution for communication, for making, it can make a sound that lets people know it's time to rally. Um, and inside of it, actually, out of every 20,000 conch, there's a pink pearl, which is something I didn't know. 
But I found that when we were researching, hence we call it pearl rare, like rare pearl, the bar. So there's a pink pearl that's very rare out of a bit 20,000. And while making the bar, I found out someone was actually collecting them in Haiti. So yeah, so that's how the bar, that's how we come up with the packaging. Um, um, our graphic designer, what she did for our logo is that if you cut across a cacao pod, this is how the beans look like, like the head of the lady. So that's what um, inspired us for this particular logo. And one, a little bit more information in the making of the, of the chocolate bar. First, we get a hundred, a bag with a, weighing 120 pounds of these beans. So I don't remember the many, but it's a lot of them. And they get stored small, medium, and large. And the reason why, so it's someone's job to go through a bag of beans and sort them small, medium, and large. And the reason is when we get to the next step, which is the roasting, you don't want the small beans to get roasted quicker and start burning the medium and the large, or the small one burning while the medium and large are still roasting. So we roast them small, medium, and large after the sorting. After the roasting, we do the cracking because there's a mini shell. And I was telling you, these bean as the shell and this one, the shell was removed. So we have a machine, the cracking that separate the shell from the, the nibs. And the next step will be a winnow where the hair, um, hair A-I-R, um, separate. So the lighter um, shell get separated from the, be from the nibs. Um, we also do it with a flat basket, Haitian flat basket called laie, which is kind of a more local way of doing it. So once this is done, we do an, an extra check and then the, the cocoa beans or the nibs are put into the machine for 72 hours. So it goes from this to the chocolate liquor or the chocolate liquid. And within, between the 50 hours, that's when we add the sugar or we add the milk, the brown sugar, if it's a, if, um, the milk, if it's a milk bar, um, the brown sugar. And if we do a lime bar, we add the lime, or if we're doing an orange bar, which is our upcoming flavor, we add the orange. And we've done private label cashew nut for a client. That's when we add it. So it's a 72 hours. So then you have a really liquid chocolate. So the next step, it will be the tempering. So now we are, if everything goes fine, you are technically on the fourth day of production because. The first day you sort, you crack, we reno, three days in the machine, and when you remove it, um, you temper. So what is tempering? So we don't use preservatives. So you don't see in our bar anything like lecithin, um, soya, or things to, um, well, more like lecithin to make sure the cocoa and the sugar stay together. So when you open the bar, you don't see kind of the cocoa separated from the sugar. So some are darker brown from next, you know, so for that, this not to happen, we, we use a machine that kind of bind the, um, the crystal or the molecule inside naturally, bind the molecule inside the bar. So it stayed least or nice looking for at least 12 to 18 months. So after 18 months, if you would open this bar, it's still good, but you might see like the cocoa is darker on top and less dark, it's just the cocoa got separated from the sugar naturally. But um, we do that step, the tempering, and then the bar get put in a mold. I mean, the chocolate gets put in the mold and then the mold get clean. Then first the packing with the yellow paper, the little stickers to close it, and then the outer paper and the final stickers. And then these chocolate get put in boxes and then shipped to the US. What's your um, production? Like how many bars do you produce a year? So our capacity, so I'll give you the money because it's easier. Our capacity, it's about 10,000 bar right now. Starting this year, March this year, our capacity is 1,000 bars this size per month. So we could- Per month? Do, yes, so we could 
potentially produce um, 120,000 of the bar. But so far, we've produced closer to 2,500 to 3,000. We just maybe, we have a booth at the Christmas market, the holiday market, um, the um, Union Square Christmas market coming up for the holiday. So if it doesn't get canceled from November 18 to December 24, we're gonna have the booth. And for this, we try, we're trying to go up to 7,000 bar between our wholesale reordering our website and the, and the holiday market. So keeping our finger crossed that production in Haiti works because we have a serious full problem now, but that's the goal. Um, but so far we've been mostly producing about 2,500, so around 15 to 20,000. So that's gonna be a real stretch for you, for us, but we are ready for it. The team is ready and excited. Awesome. All right, let's talk oh, about- That was a lot of information. That's okay. <laughs> so we're we here go for back it. to tasting, so. We said oh, I think we already work. started. Okay, I know so, <laughs> that is totally fine. So, when you open the bar, you smell it. This one has a more of a darker taste. Like uh, when I say darker, you taste more the cocoa compared to the other bar. I would do say that this one has the kind of nutty bar, um, a lot of nutty flavor, the plantain flavor I was mentioning earlier. Um, if you break it, it's like should give a little snap. So meaning that it's been nicely tempered and it's ready. And one thing I'd like to show in the mold, we haven't mentioned the mold kind of this, this, the similar to the, to the, um, to the logo that cacao pod. So when you cut the cocoa across, um, you get, you have that design in it. So tasting it. What's the verdict? So since most people have tasted it, what do they think? I love it. Yeah. And so, it, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, and you guys, please feel free to ask questions. Y'all know I talk a lot. Um, I'm curious. Now I'm so confused, right? I think I buy really good chocolates. Okay. And I buy the, the, the lightest, I buy 70%, mm -hmm. okay? But I'm more like 80, 85 is my favorite. But this says 65%, but it's giving me 80% vibes. Good question. Help me understand. Excellent okay. question. So in the world, you can buy a bar that's 90 or 80%, but what they do, and it's actually legal, they could 40% cocoa and 30% cocoa butter. So it's not gonna taste as dark because the cocoa content is less, but it's legal to say that you have a 70% bar where it's actually 40% cocoa and 30% cocoa butter. Cocoa, cocoa is the neeb plus the cocoa butter. So which mean it's, darker but when you put the cocoa butter it feel less dark so our bar like our 60 percent might feel darker might feel like more like a 70 or 80 percent bar that you used to because that other bar at 70 percent was potentially 40 percent cocoa and 30 percent cacao butter which make it not as strong make more of a thinner version if i can say that of the wow. flavor of the cocoa so yes interesting i i have no clue yeah i didn't know either until i got into cocoa business so don't worry i was an engineer working at meat factories so that was a a new world for me seven eight years ago so i, I learned too so yes so that's what happened in a so and that's the other reason why they say well, why is your bar so more expensive than that 70 or 80% bar? But if you put less cocoa in it, that means it's less expensive because cocoa butter is a lot cheaper than cocoa. So you can sell it for cheaper than I. And also if you are using air fructose corn syrup instead of real brown sugar pressed by farmers. So all these ingredients are cheaper and that don't even go if you, if you don't even know the source of, our, of the beans because 
um, in the news, and the, I know the, the New York Times had an article about it, and also the Washington Post, where they follow farmers in Africa, in, in West Africa, where they get the beans, and they realize there's a lot of child slavery in it. So if there's child slavery, so it's costing a lot less compared to me, where I know every single of our 500 farmer we source directly or the co-op farmers we buy from, and we know we pay them a living wage, not a minimum wage, because our beans, we pay seven times the going rate. So whatever m and must pay in Haiti to buy the cocoa beans, a dollar a kilo, we are buying it at seven USD dollar a kilo, wow. which means I'm sure that my farmers have a living wage, there's no child labor, and it's done the right way. But that makes my bar a lot more expensive than an mm -hmm. M&M Mars bar or any of these other company that are cutting corner. Got it. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's, I mean, that's huge. Um, that's really important to know. So right. I'm going to answer the question, what are I selling in U.S. retail? So we sell on our website. And there's also, we sell about 125 independent stores, more like natural, healthy, or chocolate stores. You can find the list on our website. I'm sure there's a couple in, in Chicago. I think Toto's Market is one of the location in Chicago. Which one? Toto's Market. It's a small grocery store. Um, Okay. But you can find online and you can put your website um, and your zip code and find what's closer. And then we do these event and these pop up. So not a lot in the Midwest, I'll admit, but on the East Coast, there's a Queens Night Market. We're going to be in the Holidays Market at the Union Square. We did the Southwest Chocolate Festival in Albuquerque recently. There's a Northwest Chocolate Festival in Seattle. So there's a lot of different opportunities. Yes, Cara, thanks for ch sharing to those market does carry our bars. And Dina found it here in Chicago. Where did you yeah. find it? At uh, Carver 47, right there on 47th Street. Yeah. And they had uh, three of the bars. Okay. They, uh, milk chocolate. I'm sorry. 47 what? Carver 57. Um, right next to a uh, little black girl. Oh, Carver Catherine. 47, that makes total yes. sense, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and they had three of the bars. They had the milk chocolate, the 50% and the 90%. Great, so yeah, so it is more like this independent, natural, friendly, on that organic store that usually carry our bars. Okay, so now that we tasted the 60% bar, we're gonna move to the two remaining bar. It's a 65% with lime. And uh, oh, and a ninety percent extra dough. We, at the end of the month on November, we, we're gonna have an eighty-two percent bar with orange. So that may, might might be worth trying when it comes. It's very good. But these lime bar has three ingredients because it's dark chocolate. If you turn around and look, it's like Haitian cocoa, Haitian rapadu, and Haitian lime. Zest. So we get the lime from a small farm outside of Port-au-Prince in an area called Croix de Bouquet. Um, it's a young, actually, she was from Boston. She's a Haitian-American Bostonite who went back to Haiti, opened a farm, uh, a fishery, like what she did, a pun, a pun where she does fish. How do they call it? Fishery, correct? That's the word in English? So yeah. she grow fish, she, grow, she grows lime, and yeah, it's a... She was in a lawyer in Haiti, Asian American, thought she could be more helpful in Haiti and went back, got married, had a baby. So anyway, that's my lime farmer, if I can put it this way. And then the two other ingredients, the brown sugar we get from center Haiti. So Haiti has 10 states. We are, the chocolate factory is a northeast state, so northeast of Haiti. On the border with DR, that's where we our chocolate factory is located. It's about eight hours from Port-au-Prince, the capital. So pretty far. Well, it's because like our wood are not the best, but it takes us eight hours to go from Port-au-Prince to the Northeast. Um, the cacao comes mostly from the next state, North. In several little community, we work with between 500 and 3,000 farmers. The 500 farmers, we buy the beans directly, wet beans directly from them. And the other 3,000, we buy them to their co-op. 
And the reason is these 500 farmers, like they are in so rural area, it's difficult for them to be organized in co-op. So we go where no one goes to buy the beans from them. So that will be the cocoa. The sugar will be in the center state, which is under the north state. Um, in three community, we get the beans from them. And I mean, not the bean, the sugar, the brown sugar, or it's an old cane sugar unrefined. And I think I was saying it earlier, it's like you get the sugar cane branch, it gets pressed and the sugar comes out and it gets boiled, the water is out and it's washed sugar. It hasn't been refined, hasn't been processed, no chemical added to it. It's like what mother nature offered us. That's why we put it. And the lime, as I said, were coming from outside of Port-au-Prince. Um, in Croix de Bouquet, our cashew nut, because we've done a private label for a client, but we might be bringing our own cashew nut bar, is coming from Northern Haiti in Plaisance. And um, our orange are also in Northern Haiti. So the lime bar, we're going to open it. Oh, I think we did, sis. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did. That's okay. And do the little up, smell man. test since I have to say it. I mean, please tell me you smell the lime. <laughs> right away. Right away. It's like it's right there. So it has that citrus. It's kind of like a dark chocolate with a lime blossom on your palate. That's the way I explain it. So you take a little bite. The citrusy is all over. It's on your nose, in your, on your palate, it's in your mouth. I love it. It's like heavy line notes with dull chocolate. And it's not a usual combination we did because lime is really in Haiti. Actually, I had to come in the US to find out that there were lemons because we don't have lemon in Haiti. So I was just used to lime. And, and that's why we have to do that differentiation, like citron vert and citron jaune, like yellow lime and regular lime, at least in French, that's how we go for lemon, because we don't have it. So lime is around us and we felt like we had to use it in chocolate bar to bring something different. And that's why we brought that up before the orange flavor, which is also, amazing i have to say it became my favorite flavor but um the lime is just fantastic if you have the moscato i think this is the pairing mm -hmm. the moscato with this one um the lime is going to pick up the lime from the moscato um i wish i had the moscato right now gina where you at i'm just kidding yeah I think that, and then like, I feel like the Moscato will sort of balance out some of the richness in the cocoa. That's yummy. Mm. Love it. I'm, I'm, I don't have a sugar high. Well, it's more like a cocoa high, my dear, because that's there's true. Little sugar Good answer, in check, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the last one. So the last bar is a 90% extra dark. What, when I do my test, I like, I mean, when I mean, when I do event, we always have the cocoa bean and we have someone, we had our visitor try out the cocoa bean. So they try it, it's edible. They're like, is it edible? Of course it is. That's where chocolate come from. And I like to have them try it first and then try the bar. So it's, it's very similar usually. And I said the difference is the sugar because it's like 90% cocoa, 10% brown sugar, or it's an all cane sugar, as we call it, rapadu, nothing else. So for people who are diabetic and all, this is the chocolate bar for them. So we, and I think this bar fits very well with a, a, a red wine. Um, this is the red wine bar. So when you open it, um, well, first read Haitian cocoa and Haitian brown autumnal cane sugar. Nothing else, really nothing else is. So it's 
So I open my bar and I smell it again. So Regine, what are you, Regine, what are you smelling? I love when a Haitian person says my name because it sounds like my mama. Um, <laughs> so um, there's something um, oily, and I mean that in a good way, like mm -hmm. bacon fat mm -hmm. on this for me. That's the first thing I noticed. Um, it's got like um, a uh, like a um, blue cheesiness to me, to it to me. Mm -hmm. Obviously, cocoa obviously brown sugar, um, caramel. So yeah. that's what I get. Okay, anyone want to share too? Definitely, I definitely smell the, the bacon fat. I was gonna say just like some meaty, savory smell, but oily, I definitely pick that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Delicious still. Oh, oh. Okay. So we're going to take a bite. And this is really strong. I like to say it's strong and smooth. It's not chalky, um, but it is it is real cocoa. Very little sugar. It's really what cocoa is made of, um, what it should be made of. Although in popular culture, that's not what we taste, but that's the real thing. The finish is giving me like, I don't know if it's the port that I just tasted, but mamba. Peanut? Like, yeah, yeah Haitian, Haitian spicy. Peanut butter, peanut butter. The, maybe scotch bonnet taste, yeah. Mm -hmm. It has a, a little hearty taste. It is, um, it's, um, it's a bit grainy. I think um, Karen was mentioning it earlier, but it's not chalky. And the reason it's grainy is because we will need to do an extra day in the refiner to make it very, very thin and get additional equipment. And we decided to go with, with it like this because that's the Haitian taste, the Haitian way of doing it other company go re more refined but we wanted to keep the Haitian way in our bars so oh go ahead yes yeah, so we thought about like where does cocoa beans come how we um how we make the chocolates from bean to bar or maybe from tree to bar um the taste why it is darker than um then a lot of the other bar we might, you might have found in general or mass market, um, how we could pair the bar with some wine, um, and the fact that it's all natural ingredient, no preservative, it's things that you can source, find in nature, find at the farmers. Um, yes. Anything else you would like to find out about chocolate? I'm happy to. With but nuts, I, so any plans to make chocolate bar with nuts? So we currently do a cashew nut bar for a private label for a client, um, but it's been so popular that we think we're gonna bring it next. So we, we, we so what we tried, as you notice, we have the two milk bar, and then we have the dark and extra dark bar. Um, we have the lime we talked about and the orange that's coming. So it's kind of a two. So next we're going to come with two nuts, bar, a cashew nut and a peanut, a peanut bar because we have these in Haiti. We already have the farmers who we're going to source from. So yes, there's a the plan to come with a two nuts bar. And then at some point we might even do some rum chocolate since Haiti is known for the rum. So yes. <laughs> and sea salt and all. But since we've been all self-financed, we haven't received any grant and all, and we were doing all the production in Haiti with everything going on in Haiti. So we have to go slower than we want, <laughs> but um, we're getting it surely, slowly but surely. We've been in business for seven years, almost seven years now. Um, we have the same employee for the seven years, the same farmers. 
um, the same team. So we're expanding slowly and surely and making sure that whatever happened, we can go through, you know, if there's any issue, whether it's like, for instance, our chocolate factory is all independent. So we're not connected to the grid because the grid doesn't really work. They have three hours of power per, per day. So which means we have to have a generator with um, fuel, but now there's fuel shortage in Haiti. So we have to have a way to store enough so that we don't take, we don't um, suffer from it. So, and everything you guys have read or, or known about Haiti. So it makes it complicated, but it's still possible. Our goal was to produce a product that Haitian anywhere, whether in Haiti or in diaspora, will be proud of and that and enjoy would enjoy and be proud of and a product that will be well standard with I mean the nutritional fact, the buckle, the nice packaging, and also that chocolate lovers around the world could fall in love with. So that's our goal. I think we've reached it. So we just need to keep the standard and keep growing. Awesome. A couple of questions. So oh yes, go ahead. Yeah, of, how have the natural disasters that have impacted Haiti, how have they impacted your business? The uh, hurricanes, earthquakes, all of that? Okay, so we were not in business when the 2010 big earthquake happened, although back then I lost my grandma, my uncle, and my cousin, so that was pretty, personally, that was pretty hard on me. The recent earthquake that happened happened in the southwest of Haiti, but we're almost in the northeast, as I was saying, and all our farmers is from this air. So if Haiti is like this big part and that that islandish part, we are more in this area and the earthquake happened there. So we haven't been affected by the recent earthquake, um, neither the recent hurricane. Any hurricane that has happened in the past six years or seven years mostly happened in the southwest, unfortunately, but not in our area. So our former team member, employee, friends and family have been pretty much okay. Um, luckily, so far, not sure if the next earthquake happened in the north, if we're not going to be affected because they are expecting one, but we've been okay. What has been affecting us is a lot, although not as much as other area um, is like the political situation, the instability, the gang, for instance, that like we're unable to ship via DHL because DHL is in Port-au-Prince. So we have to ship from Northern Haiti. Luckily there's an airport there. So we ship from there or the foil situation because since we're not connected to the grid and if there's no foil, we have difficulty in production, but we should be getting the foil this weekend. So enough for two months. So at least we're going to be able to make the holidays. So it's a lot of problem that you don't get into the U.S. And an example, they say that people are like, why, why, why don't you, why aren't you like Creole songs who went on Shark Tank and all, what, which is great. But what we notice is Creole songs in order to meet their demand, have stopped producing in Haiti. They, they opened their factory in Little Haiti in Miami to the production, whereas us, we really want to keep helping local farmers. So getting crops from local farmers, creating job for our employees. So if we delocalize and start producing in New York or in Florida, all these people who are working, having a job, gonna lose their job. And there are gonna be these people coming on the borders in Rio del Grande, you know, so. So is this a, I, I'm sorry, the, the company you mentioned, I'm not familiar. I don't know if you guys oh, are. Oh yeah. So it, it's a, it's an amazing company. They got, a, it's called Creole Essence. They use castor oil for air product. And I think last year or two years ago, they were on Shark Tank, okay. but they, although they were using Haitian castor oil in the past, but as their capacity increased, they couldn't, with the issue in Haiti, they started getting castor oil from other places. And the other thing they got into whole food and all, but what we know is that they got a grant. So they got a big grant, $250,000, but some of the requirement of the grant was that they had to be locally localized in the US. Um, one thing with whole food is that what they ask is that the first order has to be given free. So if you get into the Northeast coast or the Southeast store, let's say the, the Southeast store, a thousand store, each of taking a hundred bar, that's a hundred thousand bar, which we can't afford to give for free, but they could afford because they had the grant, 
And one of the requirement of the grant was that they have to be in the US, which they are, their factory is in, is in Miami. In our case, our goal is to create jobs in Haiti. So we, we, would, we can't take a grant that's gonna force us to close in Haiti and open in the US because our employee depend on us. I mean, they've been doing this job for seven years and we can see the growth. Some have, have saved money, some have gone to school for nursing. And I'll give an example. One employee, since we're on the border with DR, they used to go to work illegally in DR, crossing the river because the river is separating us and was arrested a couple of times, put in prison because she was illegal. And she came, she asked, she came and asked for a job. She started as a housekeeper cleaning the factory, um, said she wanted a promotion. We got her to become, train her to make chocolate. And now she's a supervisor and supporting her two children, the, the go-to person for her family. We have another one. She came right out of high school, came to work for us, um, got married, got a baby. And now seven years later, she's on her, she almost finished her nursing degree. So even though maybe later she might decide to work as a nurse, but it's through that job that she was able to um, go to go to college, um, pay for a wedding, you know, take care of her child, etc. So these are the difference and the saving they're making. In Haiti, saving are more like in, in animals. I'll say like people who have like poor, I mean not cows and pigs they buy they keep it and when there's a when there's a um, medical emergency or or emergency financial emergency they sell the cow or they sell the pig to get money and my employee will just say oh i'm on my, my fifth pig or my, my second cow so i know locally that they are saving money so it's kind of why we are we are doing the business. This is one of the goals. Uh, when I started, I said I wanted to make a difference in the community, create blue collar job. And if I'm in Miami, I'm not creating this blue collar job for Haitian. And if I, if whenever there's an issue in Haiti, I said, you know what? Fuck this, this is too complicated. I'm going to start getting my beans from DR. I'm going to start getting my beans from Trinidad. Well, it's the farmers in Haiti that are not making that are losing an opportunity to make cash. And it's my head of production who is, for instance, my head of production currently, he, is, he was a guy who grew up in Cité Soleil, which is one of the worst slum in Haiti, if you potentially heard. He managed to make it, get his way through public school and got his bachelor in management. But he, his family is from that Northeast area. But usually what happened in Haiti is that people leave the their countryside and going to Port-au-Prince so the fact this is the only job he can do from home technically because where he can when he's earning a thousand five hundred dollar a month if you know Haiti GDP it's 800 a year so this guy is making 1500 almost double the GDP per month so he has a good job his mom sending every lunch his mom is in a town that is 50 minutes away. She sent the lunch meal for him on a motorbike. So he couldn't do that if he was in Port-au-Prince, which is eight hours away. So as a company, even though we haven't reached our financial goal, I haven't gotten back my original investment yet. But in terms of the three main goals that I put when I started it, like creating revenue for farmers, creating blue collar job and creating opportunity in the countryside, these three goals are realized. So, well, I love it. I think, um, you know, we love your passion. I think these chocolates are amazing. So uh, I have no doubt that you are going to just keep killing it. Um, we met by accident and I was just so fascinated and Cara and I were in, um, Portland and we tasted the chocolates uh, and I was like oh my gosh she's coming on so I just want to say thank you I want to say congratulations and you know you have what 10 people on the call who uh, I love your chocolates and I'm sure who will continue to support you so raise a glass Corrine cheers to you and keep letting us know what we can do to support 
Yeah, thank you. And thank you for listening. And thank you for the many messages in the chat. I've been seeing them. Everyone seems so happy. So I'm glad you enjoyed that chocolate and wine pairing. And yes, and of course, you can keep buying them and discovering our new flavor as they come. I said next month, we're going to have the orange flavor. So just in time for the holidays, we have stocking stopper stuffers we also have the mini bars if you might want to offer these during the holidays so uh, looking forward to staying in touch and it was a pleasure Regine to get to meet you by accident as you said because we were on that panel about food and drinks from Haitian American and I'm like I never heard about her and she was like I never heard about Ascania so that was a great opportunity to get to learn about your business shall we Thank wine you. and Thank learning you. about chocolate and of course pairing chocolate and wine is always a great decision so, so maybe me, another time we could actually come up with the actual wine and chocolate and do the pairing exact pairing so sounds say, fun. okay chocolate with wine and we could do another awesome uh, one note about chocolate and wine pairing, um, many of you have heard me say it's a big no-no, it doesn't work, um, primarily because your wine should be sweeter than your dessert. Okay. Um, these, no, 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 um, these would I'm work, learning too. <laughs> especially the 90% because the wines are sweeter um, than, than because the chocolates are so dark. And then Catherine, like as I was tasting these for the first time, except we tasted one um, before, I was, it put me in the mind of more wine versus dessert wine. So like sweeter, like the Moscato is the perfect pairing for these. Uh, Brichetto da Qui would be a really cool pairing for these because these are actually dark. Um, so I know Shelly, you were asking about the Moscato. Yeah, so definitely, good options for these. All right, guys, um, happy to hang out for, co uh, for conversation. If you have stuff to talk about, y'all always have stuff to talk about. Yeah, well, thank you for all the message in the chat. Thank you, Melody, for loving the details. Yes, the packaging is so nice. We get that um, that comment often. Oh my God, we we were afraid of opening because it's so nice looking, but that's part of the process. It needs to look good. It needs to smell good. It needs to taste good. So it's it's a full enjoyment. It's a it's an enjoyment. It's like wine. It you have to enjoy it. It's not just like oh just pull out and just open anyway. We wanted it to look good, to look great, and to be a good representation of Haiti. That was important for us because a lot of things we get from, a lot of news we get from Haiti are not very positive. So we wanted our product to feel beautiful and beautiful, tasty, and enjoyable. It was, it was. Thanks again. You have a great business model. The fact that the yes. product is good makes it that much easier to want to support you. Thank you so much. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. I will share it with my team because um, we are all, it's all women. So we have 12 employee, 11 women because whether it's the chocolate makers or the, the bookkeeper and all, I try to really promote women either in Haiti or Haitian American who do the graphic design. Like my graphic designer went to high school with me in Haiti. Um, my bookkeeper, it's a master student from Haiti doing a, a, a master in France now. So it's a, it's a part-time job. So it's like helping her. Um, so yes, yeah, it's making a difference. And one day it's going to make me make big dollars. I hope so. <laughs> yes, for sure. You are worthy. Thank you. Melody, where are you? I'm in Orlando uh, for the National Coalition of 100 Black Women's uh, Biennial Conference. Oh, are you speaking? Are you participating? I am participating. I am learning. I am busy, busy, busy. Um, but it has been a wonderful, we've been here since Wednesday. And, I'm, and we're here through Sunday. So it has been, it has been really good. Um, and one of the, it, you know, I'm just kind of on this continual high today. One of our, uh, well, actually a long session today was about economic empowerment. 
Um, and the speaker was just kind of talking about like, what are the things that you are currently doing in your life that you can compare and that you can kind of like tease out. Um, you know, where a lot of corporate people